Greetings, family, friends, and subscribers. Um, today I am doing a shout-out tagged video started by singing Toad. Basically, my five favorite sheath knives and one honorable mention. So, I am making this video in my bedroom because this is where all my knives are. Yes, Wall of Death. That's what I call it. And that's just a partial collection of my knives. Uh, I've got a spear, a polearm, a viking axe, all my buck knives. Here's some more of my knives, including my big cold steel knives. But, uh... Let's get on with this, and we'll do my five favorite sheath knives. Now, this was a difficult choice. I mean, I had to really think about this because of all the knives that I have. But I did come up with five and one honorable mention. So let's get started. One. My Western W49 Bowie Knife. Yes, this thing is a classic. It is an iconic knife. Um, I believe some of these were even carried by soldiers in Vietnam. And pre-versions of this also saw action elsewhere. Now, I don't know what the steel is, but I know that the H on the... Down by the guard means it was made in 1984. So I'm hoping that it was still made in... So it was still made in Boulder by the original family members who eventually sold out in 84. And I think the factory moved to either Loveland or Longmont. If you know, leave me a message in the comment in down below. All right, I still have the original sheath for it, although it is missing the retention strap. Now, here's the next one. I'm not sure this can be called a knife, but it is single-edged. This is the Cold Steel Scottish uh, Dirk. And I bought this because in 1987, I bought a kilt when I was in Scotland. So you got to have a Dirk if you wear a kilt. Now this has a 13 inch long blade made out of uh, made out of cold steel, cold steel, sorry, not buck, uh, 1055 medium carbon steel. And it holds a very nice edge. Um, it has dispatched several haggis at Robert Burns dinners. And um, this is a very good knife. I really like it. Next the venerable Buck 119 Special. Oh yes, who doesn't know this knife? Um, now I have added some shrink fit grip tubing to the handle. This is the same type of tubing used on uh, fishing poles handles and it does not get slippery when wet. So this just gives a better, better grip. Um, this one was made in the 80s. So it is actually made out of the 425 high carbon stainless steel. Now, when I worked in Yellowstone National Park in 91 and 95, when I hiked, uh, this knife was on my hip. And um, she's, she's beauty. Yep, iconic. What else can you say about the 119? Next, another iconic knife. This is the K-Bar. U.S. Marine Corps fighting slash utility knife. It's got the leather handle, which has darkened with age, and the blade is not blued, it is browned. Um, it has a nice fuller, and the fuller is there to reduce the weight of the blade without compromising strength. I bought this also back in the 80s, and this part of the blade right here, right here, is very sharp. They don't sharpen that anymore. Mine came sharp. So, um, I also carried this when I worked in Yellowstone in 91 and 95. I consider this an old friend. Um, it has a leather sheath, 
which has been completely waterproofed using uh, boiled linseed oil. You can also use mineral oil. You can also go to, uh, you know, Walmart and get snow seal. Or you could even use uh, uh, Pam nonstick spray if that's all you have. But yes, this is an excellent knife. Um, I love it. Last, a new knife to the collection. This is the Jungle Supreme Kukri from Kukri House of Nepal. Uh, Kukri House of Thamal, sorry. Kukri House Thamal. All right, it's made out of 5160 um, spring steel. It has an 8-inch blade. It has a half guard. There's your religious notch. And on the top is a place to put your thumb. You've got a full tang. And, of course, that's hard to see because I put the, the grip tape on. But there you can see it. Um, it's got a bird's head pommel with lanyard hole. It's got a half guard. You can choke up on it really nice because it's got a place to put your thumb. And... This is now my, quote, bushcraft knife, because I know for a fact that if I had to chop and baton wood with this, this knife would hold up. Also, self-defense, I have no doubt in my mind that if somebody, a person, came at me and I pulled this, it might stop them in their tracks. Um, it's got the half guard, which I really like. And yes, you can stab with these if you get the point sharp enough, and mine is. So, um, it comes with a standard uh, leather over wood sheath. Let me get that and show you, because I've modified it severely. This is the sheath. I put a piece of the shrink-fit tubing to hold the... Uh, belt loop in place. It actually has a tie-down loop. Now, this is what I have done. I've added a swiveling part. This is really nice for when you need to sit down, but this is called a molly lock. It's the same idea as a tech lock, but it fits molly webbing, or you can snap it on your belt. Now I can put this on and off, Take put this on my belt without taking my belt off. Yeah, these are great little clips. Um, did not come with the little knife and sharpener, which is fine. Um, and it fits very nicely. So there is the sheath with modification. And honorable mention. This is, yes, I know what people are going to say. Oh, that's the Cold Steel Recon Tonto. Yes, it is. But mine is from the 80s. Let's see if we can get it to focus there. Um, no, we're having problems. Oh, there it is. So it says, Recon Tonto on that side. And on that side it says, Cold Steel, Carbon V, Made in USA. Yes, this is a Made in USA Recon Tonto. Made out of Carbon V Steel, which... I've been told is excellent steel. The reason Cold Steel stopped using it is because they couldn't get it anymore. So, and yes, I bought this back in the 80s, and this also accompanied me to Yellowstone National Park in 91 and 95. Uh, it doesn't have hardly any use on it. I have used it to do, you know, cutting, whittling, um, slicing. But, of course, back in the 80s and 90s, you didn't chop and split wood with a knife. The term batoning didn't even exist. came with a Cordura, a uh, stiffened Cordura sheath with, um, well, let me show it to you. So here's the sheath. You've got a D-ring at the end. You've got two uh, retention straps, and according to my friend who 
was uh, 501st Airborne. This is jump capable because it has the two uh, straps. And from what I also understand, at one time, the Cold Steel Recon Tonto, this one was used by the U.S. Navy SEALs. So, there you go. That is my five fixed blade knives and one honorable mention from my collection that I truly love and use. Oh, something else about the Western buoy. I bought this when I worked in Yellowstone National Park in 1985 at the Hamilton General Store in Mammoth Hot Springs, Yellowstone National Park. And it also accompanied me when I worked in the park in 91 and 95 and was always on my hip when hiking. As you can see, there really isn't any wear and tear on it because I never had to defend myself against anything two-legged or four-legged. So, is this a great knife? Yes. Um, often copied, but never equaled. I don't know what the steel is. Like I said, it was made in 1984. If anyone can help me, uh, that's great. The Wild West buoy by Cold Steel has a blade approximately an inch longer, but it doesn't have this little notch right here. So, yes. Made in, let's see if we can get it. Yep, there we go. There's the stamp. And with an H. Um, oh, yeah. The Wild West buoy is a good copy, but if you can find a real W49 for a decent price, I highly recommend you pick one up. Okay, that's it for now. This is James Hart from Hart's Haversack. Yes, I will be changing the name of my channel and signing off. So stay sharp. Keep your eye on the horizon and your ear to the ground because there are some strange times coming up. I'm out.